Hello, BookTube. I have a poem for you today on a beautiful wintry Sunday. Uh, and I wondered for a while what kind of poem I should read today. But then I realized that the reading that I have been hip deep in for days now, I've been hip deep in the Bible for days now, specifically the book of Exodus, but uh, also ranging widely, I realized there's plenty of poetry there. So I thought we'd do that today. I thought we'd read a psalm. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like fun? So I took my volume down of the Penguin Classics, the Psalms. These are translated by Peter Levy. And I thought we would read Psalm 27 for today and see what we make of it. God is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? God is the strong castle of my life. Who will make me afraid? The wicked and my enemies came against me. They were ready to devour my flesh, but they stumbled and fell down. If an army encamped comes out against me, my heart will not be afraid. If war comes against me, this is my confidence. I have asked one thing from God, and that is my desire, that I should live in the house of God all my days, and see and enjoy God and look for him in his temple. On the day of evil, he will take me into his house. He will hide me in his tent. He will lift me up onto a high rock. And at that time, my head shall be lifted above my enemies around me, and I will sacrifice in his tent with the sound of trumpets. I will sing and make music to God. God, hear my voice when I cry out. Favor me and answer me. My heart spoke to you. Look for my face, O God. I will look for your face. Do not hide your face. Do not be angry or turn away your servant. You had been my help. Do not leave me alone. Do not desert me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother desert me, God will take me in. God, teach me your way and lead me on an easy path, because my enemies are watching for me. Do not leave me to the bad will of my enemies. Their declarations are false, and their breath is violence. But I believe, and I shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Oh, wait for God. Be strong. Have strong heart, and wait for God. That is Psalm 27. I thought we'd read it again in the King James Bible, uh, which yeah, this is the Norton Critical Edition, which has a blurb by Steve. I trust that your Bible has a blurb by Steve. <laughs> Let's read it from the, uh, the Norton Critical Edition and see how it would have sounded to millions and millions more people than Peter Levy's translation will ever reach. So this is Psalm 27 in the King James Bible. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Quite different, you'll notice, right? The, uh, the Peter Levy has uh, the worshiping being done in God's pavilion to the sound of trumpets. King James doesn't. And the, at the end, the Peter Levy translation has the uh, narrator of the psalm saying, what was it again here? Uh, but I believe, and I shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. The King James Bible adds fainting, <laughs> and which says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Just interesting in the sense that 
you now know the kind of variation, and this is a very small example, that can be worked into these allegedly uh, unchanging texts that radically, radically change the reading. Although I think the King James does a better job in that final, those final lines of pointing out that I, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I think they added the I had fainted part there to sort of underscore the conditional sense of that, of that part of the psalm in the original, which is that the narrator of the psalm has not seen the goodness of the God in the land of the living. He is believing that he will. I would have fainted. I would have given way if I didn't believe this. But since I do, uh, I remain steadfast. Not that I've seen it, but that I believe that I will. It's, it's very interesting. Of course, all the Psalms are interesting. This one is particularly interesting for the market change in tone, right? That happens halfway through both versions of the Psalm, where it, it opens up with very similar refrain, a familiar refrain in the Psalms of, the Lord is my bastion, he's my castle, he's my confidence. If, if I have him, I need not fear my ravenous enemies who want to eat me. That fills the first half of the psalm, and then the tone changes to, well, you are my bulwark, you are my castle, don't desert me. Please don't turn your face away from me, don't turn me out. It's a, it's a shift in what seems like narrative expectation. It, it, it has led some commentators throughout the millennia to assert that this is a composite psalm, that this is that more than one hand was involved in this, that a lament about God forsaking his poor servant was grafted onto a hymn of praise or vice versa. Of course, you can't go far in that kind of interpretation if you think these were all written with a pen on paper by King David. <laughs> they weren't. Of course, that is... Mythological attribution is has plagued biblical analysis forever and ever. The, there are many hands involved in these things, and we have no idea who they were. These a lot of a lot of the psalms are ancient. They are very very old, well over three thousand years old. We don't know who wrote them or why or what their original format was like. I, I'm not so sure that I agree with with interpreters that say that this has to be two different people. I think the turn the mental turn that is documented, that is dramatized in this psalm, we've all felt it. I don't think you need to be two different people to feel that. Where you start off saying, you will be a bulwark. You will set me on a high rock in the midst of my enemies. You, I can, I can take refuge in your pavilion to the sound of trumpets or not. I will praise you. Please don't desert me. I'm putting all my faith in you. Please don't desert me. That seems like a natural psychological progression to me. Uh, I just think it's it's interesting that the theoretical thing in the psalm is God. The presence of enemies, the enemies are characterized two different times in, in the psalm. One as wanting to eat the narrator's flesh, and the other as bearing false witness, as lying about, slandering the narrator and surrounding him. Please give me a plain path because I need to see where I'm going because I'm surrounded by people who wish me ill. Those enemies are very real. They have a palpable presence in the poem. Whereas God does not. The narrator thinks that God lives in a tent or a temple or a tabernacle of some kind or other. He, 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 God is very much viewed as a very powerful human warlord who will give you exactly the kind of sanctuary that you require. And it's later centuries is particularly... Uh, Christian interpretations that have turned that spiritual, that have taken the, you know, that 1500 BC agrarian warlord obsessed conceptualizations of the original authors of this poem, that God will have a huge pavilion of, of, of tents and tabernacles. He will be able to give you sanctuary from your enemies in an almost literal sense. It feels almost like the the original singer of this poem is asking a warlord for, for mercy. Don't turn away from me. Don't turn me out of your door. I, I need your mercy or my enemies will destroy me. That kind of very human interaction is just imported to God. He is the ultimate version of that, that warlord who will offer you mercy who will offer you the sanctuary of his tent, who, who will prevent you from being destroyed by your enemies. He's the ultimate version of that, and 
Hence, the spiritual interpretations of the psalm in the last 2,000 years, Christians have latched onto that. Rather than, Christian interpretation usually pulls away from anthropomorphizing God as living in a tent, right? As a physical being who's living in a tent, anything like that. I think that's fascinating. That you you are, the the narrator is urging you to wait upon the Lord. To, to wait and have faith. You will see the Lord in the land of the living. You will look upon God. But it hasn't happened yet. It, it hasn't happened yet. What, it, what has happened is that the narrator of the poem is beset by enemies and needs some sort of relief, hence the prayer versions of the psalm, the prayer elements of the psalm. I think it's quite lovely. Uh, I enjoy it quite a bit uh, for an early psalm. Uh, and that's going to be our poem for today. It's Psalm 27. <laughs> I didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> Maybe we'll do another psalm next Sunday. Uh, if I'm still here, Maybe we'll do another psalm next Sunday. In the meantime, that's your poem for today. A little bit from the good book. <laughs> but I will wrap this up for now, and I will see you soon. Thank you, book two.